Kia ora year 12 and 13, this is part 2 of a video on how to use complex numbers to help us with trig problems, so please go watch part 1 first. Um, part 1 looked at this problem, which is a made up one by me, Not, I don't think it's a scholarship question, but it could have been, to show that cos of 5 theta is equal to this thing here. So most of the hard work was in the first half of the problem, we're going to use that result now to show that cos of 18 is equal to this thing here. Um, so the big idea in here that we need to spot is that we have a lurking quadratic equation. But we're going to start off by saying, well, let's just write out what we've got. We've got cos of 5 theta is equal to all of that stuff in terms of theta. So if theta is 18 degrees, then 5 theta is 5 18s and 90 degrees. And that gives me the very useful result that cos of 5 theta, so cos of 90 degrees, is equal to zero. So we can start off straight away by saying that zero is equal to, whoops, something just happened. Here we are. So zero is equal to 16 times this. And we just have to um, solve this for cos of 18 degrees. So we can spot straight away that we've got a common factor in there which is cos of 18 degrees, and once that's gone, we've got a quartic equation, which collapses into a quadratic. Right, because if you look at the pattern here, it's just like a slightly harder version of one we struck in level 2. We've got a something to the power of 4, and we've got something to the power of 2, and then a constant. So if we let x equal cos squared of 18 degrees, we can simplify all of that. Now the first thing to notice though is that we can divide through by cos of 18 degrees. Okay, the reason we can do that is we know that it's not equal to zero. And when you're working at high levels in maths, you need to make sure that you explain things like that concisely. So since cos of 18 degrees is not equal to zero, we get 0 is equal to 16x squared minus 20x plus 5. Right, so what have I done there? I've divided through by the cos of 18, and then I've made this substitution in here to dramatically simplify my problem. Now, while we're here, we've got x is equal to cos squared of 18 degrees. So what do we know about x? Well, we know, first of all, that because x is squared, x must be positive. But we also know that x must be between 0 and 1. And we're going to go even further later on to narrow down the possible values of x. But for now, all we have to do is to chuck this thing into the quadratic formula. Right? So we get x equals negative b. Sorry about the background noise. Right, so x is equal to that. What does that give me? Well, I get 20 plus or minus the square root of 400 minus 4 times 5 times 16 divided by 32. Okay, so 2a. Right, so when we clean that up, we have x is equal to 20 plus or minus root 80 over 32. Now, if you're watching this, I'm hoping that you're already really comfortable with manipulating thirds. So what we're doing here is that we're just looking under that 80, we're looking for squares, and you can see that 16 is a factor. So I can pull that out and get 4 here. So that gives us just about our answer. We get x is equal to... Dividing through by 4, 5 plus root 5 over 8. But it's plus or minus. So this plus or minus is something that we have to just pause and have a wee think about. So what's x? Well, x is cos squared of 18 degrees. So there's only one answer for cos of 18. So there can only be one answer for cos squared of 18. So let's look at this and see how can we figure out which one it is. 
Well, if we think about the graph of cos of x, here it is here. That's 1, and that's 0. Now, your cheeky way to do this is to look at your calculator, but that's just not, not nice. So thinking about it, um, how can we put some bounds around cos of 18? Well, what do we know about this function? Well, the function's decreasing in this range here between 0 and 90 degrees. And we know that 18 degrees is pretty close to 0. And we know that it's less than 30 degrees. So this is how I thought about it when I tried to somewhat rigorously work out how to reject some of these solutions. So we've got 1, and we've got root 3 and 2, and there's 30 degrees there. So we can say that cos of 30 degrees is equal to root 3 over 2, and cos squared of 30 degrees is equal to that squared, so 3 quarters. So we've got cos squared of 0 here, and we've got cos squared of 30 here. So this is 1, and so this is 3 quarters. Because the function is um, decreasing, what we call monotonic, cos squared of 18 degrees must be between these two numbers. Okay, so working back to what we had, we had x, which is cos squared of 18, is equal to 5, plus or minus root 5 on 8. But we can reject the lower of those, because if you go 5 minus root 5 on 8, since it's less than 3 quarters, in other words, it's not in the range where we know it should be. So we're going to go with this. x is equal to 5 plus root 5 divided by 8. So that's cos squared of 18. But we want cos of 18. So again, it could come from plus or minus that but we know that it's positive. So we reject the negative square root since cos of 18 is greater than 0. Okay, so that gives me cos of 18 degrees is equal to 5 plus root 5 on 8 as required. So there you go. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're probably wondering why I took so long about this last bit here. And it's because um, we want you getting more and more confident with um, elegantly knowing how to reject some of these extra solutions that we get in harder problems. And so this idea of sandwiching your value between two known values is quite a useful one. Okay, there was no reason that I had to use 30 degrees here. I could have used cos of 45 out here, or I could have used cos of 60, or I could probably just have looked at my graph and said, hey, I want the answer that's quite close to 1, not the one that's quite close to 0, because 18 is here on my graph. But some kind of logic about why you're chucking out solutions is important at this stage. Thanks for watching. I'll be back later on with some other exact value things.